CD, SACD, DVD audio, pure audio, Blu-ray, MP3, FLAC, WAV, ALANG, DSD, DSF, the number of audio formats is countless and many find it difficult to choose where basically there are three groups of audio encoding that can be stored on a limited number of carriers. Well, that probably isn't clear either. Time for some explanation. There are roughly two ways of storing audio digitally. Linear pulse code modulation or linear PCM and pulse density modulation that is known under the brand name Digital Stream Direct or DSD. There are other methods but these are not used for music distribution. Let's start with the latter. DSD is used on Super Audio CD and nowadays also downloads in DSD are available. DSD information can be stored in files that have DFF or DSF as extension. The technique offers high quality audio but never reaches the wide market acceptation. For SACDs you need a special SACD player and SACDs can't be ripped easily. DSD files bought online can be played back on many modern streamers and computer DAC combinations. On SACDs the DSD64 variant is used where the 64 stands for a sampling frequency that is 64 times that of a CD. The very high sampling rate can be used since only 1 bit per sample is used. The quality is often compared to 24 bit 352.8 kHz PCM. I'll come back to PCM. There are also DSD128 and DSD256 files for sale, although their number is very limited. Obviously their sampling rate are 2 and 4 times that of DSD64. In theory a high assembly rate provides more precise registration up to a point where the precision is higher than needed. The jury is still out on this subject. Usually linear PCM is called just PCM. It is the digital format that is used on CDs. It uses a sampling frequency of 44.1 kHz and 16 bits per sample. Please watch my video Digital Audio, Pulses are not real world, sine waves are, for an explanation on what it all means. The link is in the show notes, in the top right corner and at the end of this video. To offer a higher quality and to have an answer on the Sony and Philips SACD format, the DVD Audio was developed. In essence a DVD disc that only contains PCM files at a higher resolution. Usually 24 bit 96 kHz are used, although 24 bit 192 kHz versions are offered too, but never of the same album and artist. Where a limited catalogue of SACD discs is still for sale, DVD audio discs are not or at least almost not. But the industry tried the same trick again with pure audio Blu-rays. These are Blu-ray discs that contain up to 192 kHz 24 bit audio files in stereo but can also contain surround and even Dolby Atmos files. Again with very limited success though. In the meantime the internet had already started promoting the proletarian sharing of music using techniques to get smaller audio files. The files on the CD are so called WAF files and are relatively big for the information they contain. When the files are copied to a hard disk, often called ripping, it therefore results in a file that has the WAF extension. Back in the day when bandwidth was scarce, the internet was slow and hard disk capacity was very expensive, the Emotion Picture Expert Group, MPEG for short, developed a system to compress video and audio files by leaving out information that will not be missed. That resulted in the MPEG 1 standard that was followed up by the MPEG 2 standard and used for DVDs. At that time the audio part, called MPEG 2 layer 3, abbreviated to MP3, became popular with youngsters to share music over the web. They often used the 128 kilobits per second setting that reduced the file by a factor of 10 or more. It also reduced the audio quality but when played back over PC speakers no one will notice. 
The compression can be set at a higher bit rate, leading to larger files. 256 kilobits per second is already better and 384 kilobits per second sounds identical to the original to many that own a simple stereo in a box system. It reduces the file size to about one fifth, but the development at MPEG led to MPEG-4, there never was an MPEG-3 standard published. The MPEG-4 compression allegedly is twice as efficient as MPEG-2, meaning that for the same quality the file will be twice as small or for the same file size you get twice the quality. For video, this codec, the technical name for such a mechanism, was called Advanced Video Codec, AVC, and is used for Blu-rays. The audio codec is called Advanced Audio Codec, abbreviated to AAC. Apple adapted this codec and initially applied a proprietary copy protection to it. This made people believe it was an Apple format, Apple Audio Codec. It isn't. The copyright free version, also now used by Apple, is an original MPEG standard and since it is supposed to be twice as efficient as MP3, I use this for mobile use, like in the car. There the 256 kilobit per second setting produces sufficient audio quality, but not for the home. Then a file format named Free Lossless Audio Codec. FLAC for short, became available that was able to reduce the file size of a WAV file by 40 to 60 percent without degrading the sound. There have been people that heard differences between WAV and FLAC files and they were right. At that time decompressing FLAC files was not done properly on some players. FLAC works about the same as zip compression on a computer. If you compress a big spreadsheet using zip and send it around the world, on the other side it can be unzipped and will contain exactly the same info. With audio this unpacking needs to be done at sufficient speed and nowadays that's no problem at all. At the same time Apple developed their own lossless codec called Apple Lossless Audio Codec, or ALEC for short, or just called Apple Lossless. It's about the same as FLAC and since FLAC is open source it is preferred by many. Two years ago a new way of encoding music was introduced called Master Quality Authenticated. It comes from the understanding that our auditory system doesn't function as electronics in a linear way but has its own set of properties that we still only know and understand partly. Although it uses a mild form of lossy compression above 45 kHz and thus is not lossless in the technical bit counting sense, to me and many colleagues it does a better job in storing and reproducing audio, which to me is the point of it all. But as with any change there is a group of protesters that use all kinds of arguments to prove MQA's bad news. Please watch my playlist on MQA for more information. Next to the audio quality it also has the feature to store high resolution files in a file size that is about equal to WAV while it can further be compressed using FLAC. This way a high resolution audio file, say 24 bit 192 kilohertz, can be stored in a file that is almost equal in size to a 44.1 kilohertz 16 bit file. When the CD was introduced you needed to buy a CD player and CDs. Then when as ACD and DVD audio were introduced you needed to buy another player yet again. Luckily most SACD players also played DVD audio and vice versa. Then streaming became popular and you could use your computer to play music. But since computers are not optimized for audio quality, they do sound very poor, also when you play for instance high quality FLAC files. So an external digital to analog converter was needed unless you use a network renderer, a playback device that is part of your stereo but gets the music over the home network from your computer or NAS. Then high res audio files became available and you needed a device that was suited for 96 kHz and later on even higher sampling rates. And for MQA you need yet another DAC or player. You might not like that, but it's the reality of a tech driven world. 
People that complain about having to buy a new MQA deck should realize that they don't have to buy anything. The old gear still works and have been working a lot longer than their smartphone that is often replaced after only two years of use, if it isn't broken or lost sooner. If you switch to streaming this might be of interest for you. I ripped a track from a CD and then converted it to all formats except for MQA since that can only be encoded in the studio. The track I used appeared to be one that could easily be compressed to a high degree, so the FLAC and ALEC files were smaller than usual. But that's fine. Let's see. When we set the WAV file to 100%, the MQA file compressed in FLAC as usual will be around 49%. Apple lossless about 46%, the normal WAV file compressed with FLAC around 45%. AAC at 256 kilobit per second around 18 percent, MP3 at 256 kilobit per second around 16 percent and MP3 at 128 kilobit per second around 9 percent. These figures might vary depending on the music chosen and the encoding software and thus are a rough indication. But they are clear enough to see that using WAV is a waste of space. But it gets even more interesting if we compare the file size to the sound quality as perceived by me. I know this is purely subjective, but it is also based on 45 years of listening experience and thus not completely useless. WAV is a starting point and thus is 100% audio quality. On good equipment, ALEC and FLAC sound the same and thus also score 100% while producing clearly smaller files. MQA, also based on the same WAV, has the ability to sound better since the mastering in the studio is done differently and it scores 125% to my ears, while the file size is almost as small as a normal FLAC. AAC at 256 kilobit per second produces considerable smaller files at the expense of some audio quality and scores 80%. MP3 at the same bitrate produces even slightly smaller files but also further reduces the audio quality scoring 50% while MP3 at 128 kilobit per second has by far the smallest file size but also the lowest audio quality rated at 30%. Now what does this all mean? Well, from a technical standpoint, higher sampling rates using the same technique offer potentially higher quality. That doesn't necessarily mean a recording at a higher sampling rate will absolutely sound better. A bad recording cannot be improved by a higher sampling rate, nor will it compensate for poor audio equipment, although some equipment might sound better since those files are easier to convert. But generally, higher sampling rates will offer higher audio quality. Watch my video, The Truth About Nyquist and Why 192 kHz Does Make Sense for further explanation. Now, how can you obtain those files? Let me give you an overview, starting with PCM 44.1 kHz files that can be bought on a CD and as WAV, FLAC, ALEC and MQA files. These files might also contain 48 kHz files. The content of MQA files differs somewhat, see my video Is MQA Lossless for more information. 88.2 and 96 kHz 24 bit files are available on DVD audio, pure audio Blu-ray and the aforementioned audio file formats. The same goes for 172.4 and 192 kHz files at 24 bit. 352.8 and 384 kHz 24 bit files are not available on disk but are supported by file formats. DSD64 is available on SACD and as DFF and DSF computer files. DSD128 and 256 are not available on disk but are scarcely available as DFF or DSF files. If you can live with lower quality for instance, for mobile use, AAC is the best choice, but for home use, AAC and MP3 are not for those that want quality. Let me also mention that there are many other file formats around, but the ones I mention are the popular ones. 
If you are happy with your CD player, that's great. As long as you enjoy the music, you're fine. Seriously. And the same goes for any other system. Getting newer technologies always mean you have to invest. I already mentioned the smartphone, but for a car it's the same. Whether you want airbags in every corner, distance control, hybrid tech and so on, it means you have to invest. That is the reason new tech is developed, to keep you buying and when done with some sense it is a good system. You really wouldn't like to listen to a wax roll recorder from the 8080s. A problem arises when the so called added value kicks in, also called snake oil. Whether something is snake oil or not is often hard to say without evaluating the product. I see some manufacturers getting very popular on the web by using all the right words and a too low price. Anyhow, depending on your need for quality you can now make your own choices. I use MQA files where possible. Since you can't make MQA files yourself, you depend on what you can buy or stream. And you do need a DAC or streamer that, then, that can decode MQA. For all other music I use FLAC at home. For portable use I use AAC256. I almost never listen to headphones or in-ears. I only use my smartphone for music in my car. There I find AAC256 more than adequate. In this video I mentioned some other videos I made. When you watch this video in a browser you have seen links to the right of me and you will see them at the end of this video after the book promotion. The links are also listed below this video in YouTube. If you have enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up. You can also subscribe to this channel or follow me on Twitter, Facebook or Google Plus for info or more videos. See the show notes for the links. Please consider supporting the channel through Patreon or PayPal. Any financial support is much appreciated. The links are in the show notes, just as the links to the description of my three setups. Help me to help even more people enjoy music at home by telling your friends on the web about this channel. I am Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.